We are very pleased to welcome Hunter Dickinson onto the podcast today. If you don't know much about Hunter, he is a seven foot two center and he is Michigan's top ranked recruit in the 2020 class. First off, thank you, Hunter. Welcome on. How are you getting through quarantine, handling the pandemic, stuff like that? You hanging in there? Uh, just a lot of workouts, homework, and video games, probably. Uh, probably doing a little bit of Netflix, too. Have you been able to get out and play any basketball during the pandemic? I'm able to play a little bit of basketball. There's a gym near my house that I'll use um, uh, every chance I get, really, uh, to be able to shoot and just work on my shot and stuff like that. All right, Hunter. What does a quarantine day in the life look like for you? Uh, I'll sleep in a little bit. Because I'll probably um, sleep in so I get a little more sleep than I do uh, during the school uh, week. So I'll probably wake up around 10 30 11 ish and then go uh, you know do some homework till about two three get on the, um, probably either get a workout in at four or get on the game and then work out and then go back work out again at like eight or nine and then just have some eating in there in between and stuff like that <laughs> Um, for the listeners who don't know much about you, um, what players uh, would you say you model your game after? Probably, uh, if there was one player, I think it would be Jokic. I don't really model my game after him, but I just think we play like uh, his kind of versatility within like um, being able to run the offense, I think, is something that's really similar to me. Yeah, gotcha. Um, Hunter, I wanted to talk about recruiting rankings. Um, what do you think about them? Do you pay attention to them? Does it motivate you? Um, you know, during the whole recruiting process, did you really care where you were ranked? Uh, no. I mean, I'll, I get the notifications on social media. I mean, at first, like when you're younger, you do. Like when you're a freshman and sophomore, it's kind of just fun because like, you're young and that's what's cool. But as you get older, you kind of tend to see like what they're really about and it's not really about skill uh the older you get it's more about potential and just what they think you'll uh become really and so most people tend like most basketball players tend not to really care about them well we'll actually even make our own rankings among people i remember at the skills academy we're making our own rankings and that was pretty (laughs) cool What is your relationship with some of the other players coming in the 2020 uh, recruiting class? Well, obviously, me and T have known each other most of our lives uh, through basketball. Um, me and Zeb and Jace are pretty cool. Uh, I know that we played against each other down in Florida. Uh, Jace, we talk every day pretty much. Um, and then Mike Smith, uh, we're all in the same group chat. We were just playing Call of Duty with him yesterday. <laughs> So uh, we're pretty cool. Uh, everybody, Everybody's pretty cool with each other. I kind of like how uh, the chemistry is right now with the guys. Um, Hunter, I wanted to ask you, back in January, you got the chance to play Evan Mobley. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember that's when a lot of the, you know, that was about a month after you committed. That was the first kind of thing a lot of Michigan fans saw from you. Uh, they saw that you actually outplayed him in that game, and then they saw your comments after the game where you basically were like, hey, man, I feel like I'm better. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, what was it like playing up against, you know, the, the number one prospect in the class? And, um, you, you know, uh, do, do you you know do you feel like you were a little bit underranked? Do you feel like you're every bit as good as him? Uh, so the first time I played him, we played, it was like the, I think it was, it was like two years ago, we played in Vegas. It was like, 11 o'clock our time it was like 2 a.m really like 2 a.m back home and so like he kind of got me there um so i was pretty motivated to play the next game because i feel like uh, i let him have one and then and that wasn't really my first time playing the number one player i'm used to playing uh really good bigs especially on the uibl circuit so uh i just wanted to go in there and do better than I did last year at Hoop Hall because I feel like I had a really bad performance last year. And so I just wanted to come in, and um, I knew if I played well, uh, my team would win. And so that's all I tried to do, really. Even though you haven't began your freshman year yet, uh, what are your thoughts on the Michigan fan base so far? Uh, they're pretty wild. I mean, they're passionate <laughs> about their sports, and that's, I mean, that's fine with me. I mean, 
I'm passionate about my sport, so I, I hope that the fans are just as passionate as me. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about uh, Terrence real quick. I read a quote from – it was actually from Greg Brown's dad, and he said something along the lines of, um, you know, if Terrence Williams was just a bit taller, he'd be the number one player in this class. Um, you know, as as one of the lower-ranked players in the class, um, not a lot of Michigan fans know about him. So I was wondering if you could talk about his game, how skilled he is, uh, what we can expect from Terrence Williams. I mean, my man's still like, still like 80 overall. I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, Terrence – like ever since we were younger, he was always ranked really high. Uh, we were both ranked pretty high always um, when we were like seventh, eighth grade. Uh, just because, I mean, if you wanted, like, he was like, he played exactly like that. And he was always taller than everybody. He was like, me and him, not, we weren't the same height. I was always like the tallest and like one of the tallest players in the country. But he was always pretty tall too. And so I think he's like six, 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 seven right now. And so he was like, he was playing the four. And so he used to get a lot of, I mean, like, yeah, people need to start. Uh, I guess Terrence is a little bit underrated because he's always been playing like the five at Gonzaga and stuff like that. And then also on takeover, it's like, he's kind of like the shooter, but I mean, my guy can play. He's pretty good. Um, like, yeah, I, I saw that quote about Greg Brown's father uh, saying that if he was like six, nine, he'd be the number one player in the country. I mean, she was probably right. If Terrence was like six nine, he's moving. He can shoot. Like he's one of the best shooters in the country. Probably be a little bit more bounce here too. So yeah, he'd probably be number one. <laughs> um, which Big Ten center are you most uh, looking forward to matching up next year with, and why? Uh, probably Luca, because that's my friend. Uh, we've known each other a while since. Um, probably my eighth grade year. That's when Dang. I. I practiced uh, with TakeOver, and he was, like, I was on TakeOver, but I was on the younger team, but I was able to practice with the 17s, and he was on there, so probably Luca. I mean, the other bigs, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think there's another one. Probably Kofi from Illinois. I like playing against him. Uh, yeah, I mean, those, those are probably the two that come to mind. Yeah. Um, I, I actually had two questions here. Uh, the first one, I just wanted to talk to you just, just briefly about, you know, the whole Isaiah Todd um, and, you know, Josh Christopher thing. Obviously, Christopher was never a member of the class, so I'm not sure if you ever expected that or not. But um, was it kind of a bummer to see Todd, um, you know, decommit and then decide to go pro? Uh, yeah, it was a bummer um, at first. But then, you know, you kind of got to realize that he's just trying to do what's best for him. I mean... It would be pretty hard for any of us to turn down that kind of deal, given the yes. circumstances. So, I mean, I, I don't hold it against him at all. He's gotcha. just trying to do what's best for him. And then um, I also wanted to ask, what is the absolute worst thing about being seven foot two? Uh, I mean, I can deal with the people staring at me. It <laughs> definitely hang your head because it comes at the worst times usually. Gotcha. All right, Hunter, we have a quick segment of some rapid-fire questions we wanted to ask you. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Uh, what's your shoe size? 17. <laughs> uh, MJ or LeBron? MJ. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Uh, waffles. Ooh. Uh, favorite artist? Light show. Um, favorite basketball shoe? Ooh, uh, the... Ky uh, Kyrie 3. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Uh, <laughs> Pepsi products. Okay. Um, favorite TV show? Favorite TV show of all time? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Prison Break. Uh, if you could choose, what number would you want to wear uh, for next season? 1 or 24. Uh, what's your favorite brand of cereal? Um, Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Oh, uh, Chipotle or Qdoba? Oh, Qdoba. Uh, favorite pregame song? Favorite pregame song? Probably East of the River. And, uh, this is a most requested question. Uh, do you eat mac and cheese with a spoon or a fork? Oh, fork. 
Oh. Uh, so I did see I did see that Terrence was pretty adamant the other night during that MJ doc that you know LeBron was uh you know LeBron's the go. Did you guys argue about that at all? Uh, I, I, I don't want to argue with those kind of people. They just they don't make any sense. <laughs> I apologize. I'm one of those people, but you know. All right, Hunter. Uh, like I said, we were going to try to get you in and out of here as quickly as possible. Uh, we really do appreciate you stopping in. Um, we can, we can do that. You can hop back on with us at any time. Um, I really appreciate it. Stay safe. Uh, we can't wait to see you in Ann Arbor and just thanks again. All right. Thank you for having me. Yep. No problem. Appreciate it.